It's my pleasure to um, hand this off to Dr. Rocco and to also just once again express our deep appreciation for um, Dr. Rocker's guidance and um, all the entire team. Thank you very much, Dr. Rocker. It's all yours. Thank you very much. Um, so first of all, uh, I am certainly not doing this alone. I really want to uh, give a big shout out to all the people who are manning the hotline. They're doing an amazing job. Um, and also to the doctors who are reviewing uh, the hotline and also making phone calls with us as well. So that's Gita Lisker, Jeremy Rosenblum, Josh Milner, Judah Firestein, Seth Sokol, Yardina Osban, Jeremy Singer, and Nimrod Dayan. Everyone is doing a phenomenal job. They're working hard at work, uh, working uh, continually with the SR community. And SAR is doing a phenomenal job. The administration is, um, I can, we can't say enough. So thank you guys very, very much. So where are we different um, than where we were last time we spoke? Uh, the difference is um, the wave is starting to uh, come on shore. Uh, so there are definitely more cases in the community. I think before we were talking much more about uh, localized cases in New Rochelle and SAR and, and its effect, and now we're really much more in a community uh, spread at this point. Um, there was a coronavirus update that was sent out by SAR um, around an hour or so ago. Um, I'm going to review some of the things that were mentioned there. And, uh, but everyone, if you could read that, that'd be fantastic. So there are concepts that are being brought up and I just want to sort of go through them um, and uh, just make sure that everyone understands them. So that what the CDC is recommending, the World Health Organization, what they're saying is we have a, lot, a virus that's coming. It is spreading rapidly. We know um, that around 80% of the people who get this virus um, are going to be fine. You know, they may not even know that they have it, um, but there is a potential that they are going to shed. And then uh, the other percentage are going to have more serious uh, illness, ranging uh, in degrees. Um, but then we also know, especially for uh, the more vulnerable and the, and the older, um, it could be a very a significant uh, uh, disease. Uh, the hospitals are starting to feel the impact. Um, and I think when we compared ourselves, uh, or, or when you look at the world impact, when you looked at China, when you looked at South Korea, when you looked at Japan, um, the measures that they took uh, early on were very draconian and were very deliberate. Um, and they quarantined very quickly. They closed bridges. Um, that is something that America isn't necessarily you know, ready to do um, or have the capacity to do. And so looking to Italy may be a better model uh, about what we should be expecting. Um, Italy is around 11 days um, ahead of us and their numbers have grown uh, significantly and their hospitals are extremely um, taxed and overburdened right now. Um, and so it behooves us to take on the responsibility to do the best that we can to reduce the impact on the community. Um, and, redu and what I mean by that, and I, I mentioned this last time, I'm just gonna talk about it again, is when um, a virus enters the community, certainly like, so it enters the community and then it rises and it rises faster and faster the more individuals that are affected. Um, and if we can separate people to decrease the rapid uh, rate of spread, then what happens is that large spike levels off a little bit. Um, hopefully, fewer individuals will get infected. Um, but more importantly, if we spread out um, the number of people who are infected, that is hugely important for the healthcare system. Because what we have seen in Italy, and they're not peaking yet, um, is that their hospitals are full. Um, their doctors are overburdened, uh, their nurses are overburdened, um, and it is a very dangerous situation. So if we as a community, and this is what the CDC is saying, can control that, um, then that is the best way we can help out uh, the larger community. And so the different concepts of sort of separating yourself to decrease the spread, isolation is number one. So isolation is really for the person who is infected. Uh, 
That should, person should have no contact with anyone, um, you know, you know, face-to-face uh, -face contact, um, unless, you know, there are more serious circumstances. Um, and they should really isolate themselves. Um, and obviously, if they are sick, they should, well, actually, let me back up. They should be in communication with people uh, constantly, just in case there is a turn um, for their medical condition. Um, again, most people are going to be fine. The majority are going to be fine. But if there's a turn for their medical condition, they should be in communications uh, with others to say, hey, I think things are you know, getting worse. I think I need to see a doctor. I think I need to seek help at this point. Um, so that's isolation. Um, quarantine is what you uh, have experienced. You guys have another 65 minutes uh, of quarantine. And quarantine was really separate yourself from the community, stay in your home, um, try to the best you can to separate uh, within the house. Um, but really it was to uh, stay within your space. Um, and it was a challenge um, and, and it's hard. Uh, but the reality is, those who are quarantined in their house and are about to come out are at less risk of having coronavirus than their neighbor who has uh, been out and about for the, uh, the last few weeks. Um, so it really has you know, uh, paid off in it, and it's uh, an important public health uh, process that you went through. Um, then you've graduated into social distancing. Now social distancing, think of it as like, quarantine junior, um, because really what we're saying is still keep your distance. There still is a risk. It's not like, ooh, I'm out of quarantine. I could do whatever I want. If you go out and start inter um, uh, integrating into the community, you don't know who is infected out there. Um, as we mentioned, if 80% of the people with coronavirus have mild cases or no symptoms, then the issue is, is that they need to be the person on the street who you hang out and talk, um, talk to for a little while. Um, so we have to be uh, aware uh, of the risks. Um, and um, these people may be shedding. And we talked about a little last time, the issues of shedding. And I'm just gonna briefly touch upon it. Um, and what that means is they have virus you know, in their nostrils, in their saliva. And so when they you know, are thinking about something, they now have it on their hand. They shake your hand, they touch a doorknob, they touch you know, a countertop, you now touch that, and then you have a, you know, a deep thought. Again, you just introduced the virus to yourself. Not every introduction means that you're gonna be infected, but it obviously increases uh, your risks. So that's why hand hygiene is essential. Um, and uh, so the social distancing, what we say is because coronavirus is a heavier virus, if someone coughs, if someone sneezes, it goes out around six feet, it falls. Um, so unless someone sneezes directly on you, the risk of you from someone sneezing from far away or coughing from far away is not very high, but it just means that the particles are around that area and they can be picked up um, you know, on the surfaces. So you just have to be uh, aware of that. Um, so what we published today were uh, our recommendations for social distancing. Um, and to some, they may sound or appear pretty harsh because we're saying um, do not, uh, you know, gather in spaces. Uh, for, for the working, you know, parents, um, most offices have already um, instituted some sort of social distancing. And they're saying no meeting, meetings greater than, you know, 50. A lot of institutions are saying 20. A number of institutions are now saying 10. Um, and when those gatherings are occurring, people are supposed to be keeping uh, at uh, six feet distance. Um, so that is an aspect of social distancing. Going out into crowds, going to the supermarket, going to you know, events, going to bars, going to restaurants. So if you need to get food, obviously you need to get food. The recommendation is to go out off hours. Um, in regards to bars, restaurants, you know, areas where there, you know, there are big events, most of them are closed down. And the, uh, the governor, I believe, also uh, today put in strict regulations about uh, restaurants, and most of them are going to be closing down as well. Um, so these measures, again, are all to decrease the amount of uh, small local spread. Now, people may be looking at the numbers of the rise within New York or within America and be like, wait a second, or even in Italy, 
and say, listen, they quarantined around 10 days ago, but the spread hasn't changed. The spread is going up steadily. When you institute these quarantines or um, these measures, it doesn't affect the, the uh, number of cases for probably around two weeks. Because you have to understand, it's your transmission, you're preventing that, and then there's a symptomatic and it takes a while for that to spread. So when you institute these, these measures, it takes a good two to three weeks for it really to make an epidemiological uh, difference in the community. Um, so what we are asking people to do is a tough task. We're asking people to really stay in their homes um, when they can. When they need to go out, go out in small groups, go at off hours and locations. Um, and another tough uh, ask is, you know, we shouldn't be gathering together. So there shouldn't be Shabbos meals. Um, and I know Rabbi Willig just sent something out uh, recently, um, as well as Bergen County, uh, you, you know, uh, the rabbis, um, and I believe uh, North uh, or Southern Westchester saying that minions uh, are, should be canceled uh, as well. So davening alone at home, um, and then when it comes to the kids, and this is going to be a challenge, is um, we really are saying we should uh, limit completely uh, playdates at this point. Um, social media, getting out there um, and, uh, you know, definitely trying to socialize. Um, but right now, it is a critical time. If we could decrease the spread over the next week or two, we will feel a difference in two or three weeks and that will save an enormous burden on the hospital. So this is the big ask. Um, I think that's kind of the main things that we want to cover. Uh, I want to, you know, be open to questions as well. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to read it or if people are going to coordinate it. How do you guys want to do it? We'll coordinate. Okay. Um, I'll here, Josh, I can ask a couple of the questions that Please. we were posed there. Um, people were asking about play dates. Um, out, one of the questions was play dates outdoors, going to uh, playgrounds, uh, public parks. Is that something that is not recommended? Talk, talk a little bit about that. Right. So in regards to outdoors is better than indoors. Um, so anything outdoors when there's more open space, that's fantastic. Um, the general recommendation is going to be no-ish. Now, if you're saying for older kids, you're going out, we're going to go for a walk in the woods, we're going to keep some distance, we're, you know, or we're going to, um, you know, uh, be hanging around and talking, social, it's a big social distance. Um, I think there is a little bit of leeway there, but in general, what we're saying is getting together at this time is not the greatest idea. I think when we reevaluate this in a week or two weeks time, it will um, uh, be a different thing, um, but we encourage people to go outside. There's data saying that getting the vitamin D from the sun, getting the sunlight is important. So we definitely want people outdoors. I think we're still saying, let's limit the amount of uh, social exposure. And when it comes to the younger kids, it's impossible you know, you know, for you know, six down to say, you know, don't hug each other, don't you know, climb on each other, don't wrestle with each other. Okay. One of the other questions a bunch of people have been asking about um, let people coming at your home, a plumber, a serviceman, some, some, uh, a nanny, um, a, a babysitter, people who come from the outside, they may have traveled um, through public transportation or something you like don't know that. Is that okay? Right. Right. So, so the, it's a, a great question and it all depends upon the urgency of what you need um, for this service person. Um, so if you can push it off, push it off. Um, you do not know anyone else's history. You know your history. You know your family's history. Um, and so having someone come in your house, well, you can say, oh, we'll, we'll give them distance and all that. If they're coming to do something that is essential in your house, you have a flood, you, you know, have an electrical outage that really needs to be taken care of, a gas leak, yes, that needs to be taken care of. Um, try to practice um, social distancing. And when they leave, clean, you know, wipe up the area. Um, and, you know, wash your hands. And you can tell the gentleman, you know, the person who ever comes in, man, woman, please, can you wash your hands when you come in before you do anything? Again, but we would limit non-essential things right now. 
One of the questions, I think you addressed this in the document, but I'm not sure everyone had a chance to see it. Talk a little bit about um, uh, your own nuclear family, um, doing activities together, outdoors, hiking, stuff like that. Recommended, not recommended? Recommended. So I think this is a time that is important uh, for people to get outdoors, especially if you've been indoors for so long. Um, we want people outdoors. Um, and when you're outdoors, you know, if you meet other families, it's socially awkward. It is bizarre. We are in, listen, the New York City public schools closed. Like Italy is quarantined. This is not business as usual. This is a completely different time and we can't pretend like it's not. We are in a state of emergency right now. We don't feel it because the hospitals aren't busting at the seams yet, but we anticipate them to be and so we have to do the best we can to minimize you know, any future uh, issues. One of the questions some people have asked, I know it's a little bit early perhaps, but I think people will start, must start get planning. Um, Sedarim, Pesach time, should we be thinking about having, uh, not having grandparents over, telling grandparents to, you know what, this is gonna be a little bit different this year. You're gonna have, uh, instead of having a Seder of 20 people, we're gonna have a Seder of six and you have a Seder of six and you have a Seder of three. What do you, is that time, is it, are we able to make recommendations about that just yet? Right. So, so I will be totally candid. Yesterday, I think uh, I had a hard day. And the reason it was a hard day is because I was consulting with our shul and we decided the shul is going to close. We also decided that funerals are going to be uh, limited to a certain number. And that way, you know, and shivas are going to be virtual. And this is what people have been saying, you know, around the region. And I think it really just hit and it was really sort of painful and hard because this is something as a Jewish community, we you know, thrive on being together, supporting each other um, and realizing that we have to change the way we do this um, was, was painful, um, but it's needed. That's what we have to do. Um, so when it comes to seders, yes. I mean, we are not talking, Passover is not eight weeks away, and we're not exactly sure what's going to be there in eight weeks. It is, you know, four weeks away. Um, we know what it's going to be like in four weeks. It's going to be worse than it is now. I think we're going to take one or two more questions. Uh, I know I really want to respect your time and express our appreciation, Dr. Rocker. I know you're really busy and, um, you know, just really appreciate you taking the time. It's really very helpful. Uh, one of the questions people have asked, is there any kind of, um, I know, what is the research saying now about, how long a virus like can remain active? Um, like, is there a risk if I'm even walking, you mentioned staying outside and um, not walking within six feet of somebody, but if somebody, should I be concerned that somebody who was walking on the sidewalk a minute before me and coughed or whatever, and then there's a virus in the air or on the ground? I mean, I don't wanna, meaning you, we are painting a very strong picture here. Would it be best to just lock yourself up in your house and come out in a few weeks? Yeah, so I think we have to balance some of the mental health issues with the you know medical issues. Um, so locking yourselves in in your house, thinking that like taking a breath of fresh air outside is gonna kill you, no, right? This is not an airborne disease. When someone coughs or sneezes, I can't give you the exact number uh, of seconds or minutes that it takes for it to fall, if they don't cough in front of you, it's a respiratory droplet and it falls. It's on the ground. So if you're out and about in the woods, unless you're licking the leaves, you're fine. Um, so I'm not concerned about that. Um, okay, I think that I really want to respect your time. I know you got to get out here about 710. So I do want to say thank you. Um, again, people have general questions about health and concerns um, you're welcome to reach out to our parent to our to our hotline. I'm talking to all parents now, um, that hotline is for those general kinds of questions. And the doctors have been really responsive and helpful. I know that they also have gotten some emergency calls, which they don't want to get. I want to just emphasize again that if this is any kind of acute, uh, you know, if there's a medical problem, um, Dr. Rocker, you want to just emphasize that again, what the role is perhaps of the hotline and what the role is not a hotline, and then I'll let you go. Right, so just in regards to the hotline, it, first of all, again, it is an amazing resource and the people who are taking the calls are fantastic um, and, I, and all the workers are, are working on it uh, and doing a great job. The hotline is for people to ask questions, which sort of we 
can categorize into different groups. And then when we come to uh, a session like this, know what topics we want to cover. Um, there are some individualized questions, um, which sometimes we could address, but when it comes to significant health issues, that should be something that should go to your uh, doctor directly. And if certainly if you're concerned um, about something at that moment, that's uh, something that should be taken care of in the hospital, not, not through a hotline. So one thing I want to address as well, um, it's starting and it's going to increase. And so we're going to hear more and more numbers of people of, oh, there's this number of cases. Oh, it's doubled. It's more. That is going to be alarming to many. Um, it is to be expected. Um, so we are at right now, uh, in our country, 4.5 thousand. We are 11 days behind Italy and they are at 28,000. Um, so this is something that I think we have to sort of brace ourselves for um, and recognize that this is not a, a quick sprint. Um, we have to be prepared for the long haul and that's why doing things like going outside, you know, and um, establishing good relationships with the families and other families, but via technology, I think is very important. So I think the mental health aspect of this is critical. Last question, just because a couple people have asked it. So, um, kids returning from Israel, a bunch of kids um, who are in yeshiva or seminary or wherever they were, or kind of programs around for the year have come back because most programs in Israel have closed down. How should we be treating them? Should we be putting them in quarantine um, or you know, social distancing, any other kind of measures without you know, any recommendation for that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if you look at the CDC uh, website, um, they have three different levels of concerns um, in regards to travel. Uh, level three is Iran, China, South Korea, um, all of Europe. Um, and level, I'm not sure if anyone else is on there. Level two is the rest of the world. Um, so basically, there's no difference um, between them coming home from Israel and, and your neighbor next door. The one thing is, is you, I mean, when they got off the plane, did anyone test? Because when we talk about areas and travel, if you came from Kansas, like there's not much there in Kansas, but if you were coming from an epicenter, you know, in America, then it's a big difference. So if they came from an area in Israel where there were a lot of cases, then, you know, quarantining them probably is a good idea. But if they came from an area that there wasn't much, then I think you treat them like everyone else in the home. Thank you so much, Dr. Rock. I really appreciate it. You're welcome to uh, run over to your next meeting. Well, big debt of gratitude to you. Thank you for your continued support and help. Appreciate Thank you, guys. Good luck.